Okay, as I was saying, we're going to have two lessons of quadratic word problems, also known as applications. Um, the first lesson is, is kind of a mixed bag of applications. It could be anything from using a formula where they give you something quadratic in the formula and you use it. You might see some area problems, rectangular area problems, length times width. Um, you might just see some, just anything where you'd have an, something squared in it, okay? It, a very mixed bag of problems, guys. But at least with this, it's the type of problems you're going to see in the assignment because these came straight from the computer program, okay? So I tried to give you, this is an exact copy of the type of problems you'll have in the assignment. How many? Um, Ten. That's how many will be in your assignment. So remember when I do the lesson, the lecture for the lesson, it's the type you'll see when you go and do your assignment. The second type of word problems that you'll have in 4.10, those are all basically physics or physical science type of problems. They're all what we call projectile problems. Now you all should have taken physical science in ninth grade, right? Um, none of you have been able to take physics. Are, are you in physical science right now, right? Have you talked about like dropping um, items yet? Okay, so you're gonna know how to do this before you even get it in science class. You are gonna be so impressive to, to Mrs. Carlson. Does yeah. she have physical science? Okay. Um, I, I really wish Shelby was in here because we give her such a bad time. <laughs> you know why? Okay, we'll just leave it there. Um, she's in my free calc class, but the class loves to give her give her bad time about her experience in physical science. Um, what is it? Three times? <laughs> anyway, um, so she is, she'll be very good with projectile problems. Projectile problems are when you like have, say, a rocket ship being projected up into the sky and then it comes back down or throwing a football or anything that gets projected up and then gravity takes over and brings it back down to earth. Um, or it could just be a free fall where something gets dropped. But projectile problems are all about Earth's gravity taking over and it comes back to the ground. So 4.10 will all be problems based on Earth's gravity and bringing things to the Earth. So in the next lesson, it'll be kind of all one type. And I shouldn't say next lesson because I think the next, the projectile problems, I broke those up into like mini lessons because there's, there's like lots of different um, topics with that projectile lesson. But in this lesson, there's just so many different things that you could do with X squareds with word problems that there's just so many different topics. So we kind of do a mixed bag lesson. So let's look at number one. This one says a, a company offers its customers a discount if they order large quantities of boxes of MIM students. I have no idea what a MIM student is. Um, ironically, uh, we had a question in Algebra 1 where somebody was collecting MIM students. MIM students. We looked it up. It's a nonsense word. I don't think any there is anything called a MIM student. So this is just a, a nonsense product. Okay? We'll say that uh, Matthew invented MIM students and now he's selling them. Okay? So your company, Matthew, is selling large quantities of boxes of MIM students, okay? Not sure what a MIM student is, but his company is selling large quantities of them, okay? So the large quantity cost is calculated by this formula. So in this particular example, guys, they're just giving you a cost formula. C for cost. First thing, is it quadratic? How do you know this is a quadratic formula? Highest degree is an X squared, right? All right. So if the customer's bill comes to $6,566, how many boxes were ordered? We've got two variables, C and X. The first thing, guys, we should recognize what each variable stands for. C stands for what? Cost. 
And it looks like X here stands for what? Number of boxes. If they don't tell you, that should probably be the first thing you do is make a legend. Um, because you want to solve for what? How many boxes, right? You're solving for X. So when it comes to the formula, where does this number get put in then? That's the cost, that's C, right? It's so easy to accidentally put the number into the wrong variable. In my opinion, it's really important to make sure you understand which is which. Okay, so we're gonna put $6,566 in for C equals 2x squared. Okay, now this is what we've been working for all unit solving quadratic equations. So we look at it, and I'm not sure what method to use here. Okay, let's get it all on one side and maybe use the discriminant to determine. Okay, so I'm going to move this over to the other side. I would just subtract it, right? Okay, so we're going to use the discriminant. Boy, she, I say she, this, this did not give us very much room to work, did it? So I might be doing some of my work on another piece of paper here. But Okay, B squared would be negative 36 quantity squared, right? Minus four times two times six, five, six, six. Okay. So what again am I doing when I just do the discriminant? I'm trying to figure out what? What am I doing when I just do the discriminant? I'm just trying to help myself decide what? What method to solve it with. Okay, I need your help here, guys. What is 36 or negative 36 squared? Negative 400. Nope, not going to be negative. We got to group that, right? Anybody? Yep. Yeah. Say that again, 4,000? No. Oh, 1,200? 1,296. One minus sign. Ooh. That should, that should be a positive. Six, five, six, oh, yes. I was going to say, um, we were going to get, I was going to get a negative, which would mean we couldn't solve this. That should be negative, right? So this should be a plus. Good. What do you get here? Oh, oh 52,528, did you say? Yeah. Okay, now if you add that with the 1296, 53,824. Now, I want to make sure I heard you right there. Yep. Okay, now it's positive, so I know I'm going to get two real answers. The real question is, though, is that a perfect square or not? It is a perfect square. 232. Okay, so this is a perfect square. Guys, when this is a perfect square, factoring does work, right? A, a positive perfect square means I can solve this by factoring, okay? So I'm running out of room. So I'm going to, what was it again? 2x squared. Minus plus, no, minus 6,000. Now, again, some of you are not the best factors, right? But I'm going to try to factor this. We can try it. If we're not successful, we can still use quadratic formula or something else. But since our discriminant says it will work, what should we try first when factoring? GCF of 2 leaves us with x squared minus 18x, and what's half of this? 3283. 3283? Three, yeah. Okay. That's a pretty big number, but we'll try it. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be negative 3,283 and add to be negative 18. I might have to just start at the beginning here. One's got to be negative, right? 
and one's got to be positive. Doesn't the bigger one have to be negative? Okay, so I'm going to start here. That's way too far apart, right? Um, two doesn't go in there. Just three. Five, 13, 16. Three doesn't go in there. Four doesn't. Five doesn't. Six doesn't. Does seven? Somebody Four, just. Yeah. Seven goes in there? Yeah. How many times? Okay, that's still too far apart, though, isn't it? Okay. Eight doesn't go in there. Um, nine doesn't. Ten doesn't. Does eleven? Sometimes we just get, doesn't. Twelve doesn't. Does thirteen? Thirteen goes in there? It doesn't? Thirteen does not divide in there? Okay. Fourteen I don't think will. Fifteen, no. Sixteen, how about seventeen? No. Eighteen, probably not. Nineteen? No. Twenty, no. Twenty-one? No. Not twenty-two. Twenty-three? No. Okay, we could probably have to go pretty far, aren't we? 24, no. 25, probably not. 26, no. 27? No. No. 28, probably 29? No. No. 32, 33? No. 34? 35, 36, no. 37? No. 38, 39? No. 40, 41? 42, 43? No. Oh my gosh. 44, 45, 46, 47? No. That'd be pretty soon, doesn't it? 48, 49? 67. 49 and 67. Okay, how far apart are those? 18. Negative 18, right? Did we get the right pairing? Okay. This might be a case where factoring works, but it takes us quite a while to get the right pair, so maybe... Just plugging it in the quadratic formula would have been our best bet, but we got it, right? Is this the right pair? Uh, okay, a year. <laughs> so x plus 49 times x minus 67. But guys, at least we knew factoring was supposed to work. Otherwise, I think I would have probably given up already. If I didn't know factoring wasn't going to work, I would have thought it was prime. I'll be honest, but we knew it was supposed to work. That's what kept us going. Now, what are our possible answers here? Okay, can I sell a negative amount of boxes? No. <laughs> no, that means you got stuck with 49 boxes. No. So how many boxes did he sell? 67 boxes. Now, I think... I think on the computer, a lot of times when it's a word problem, it'll say like units optional or something like, or label optional. So you can put boxes in there, but you, I don't think you have to. Um, I don't think it ever says it's, does it ever say you have to? We haven't done a whole lot of word problems yet, have we? But the Algebra 1 has. I think it's usually optional if you want to put the label or not. But I do really like a label on a word problem, so. So I don't know if they'll want the x equals. They'll probably just want this part, okay? All right, so we knew factoring would work, but maybe it wasn't the quickest method. But those huge of numbers, guys, did you really want to put those into the quadratic formula either? That's just kind of ugly all around, wasn't it? Okay. But it wasn't a bad word problem because they gave us the formula. So at least that wasn't bad. Okay? All right. Uh, Ji Yoon, and you will see that name a lot. We've had Ji Yoon. Looks like probably a Chinese name, right? Oh, we, we cover all nationalities in this program, right? So Ji Yoon is constructing an uncovered box. So think about like at the grocery store. When you have those boxes like the canned goods come in, like a bunch of, say, green beans. 
you know, those little cardboard boxes that get folded up. You know what I'm talking about? That the pan goods come in. Okay. So Jiyun is constructing their own. So they're taking a flat piece of cardboard. Okay. And then they're cutting out these squares. They're cutting out squares from the piece of cardboard. They're cutting out these four squares. And if you cut out those squares, guys, and you fold this up, it's going to make a little like gift box. Can you picture that? Flat piece of cardboard, cut out four squares, and then fold up what's left. It makes a little gift box. Can you picture that? Okay. So, but she's, oh, I guess they're not using cardboard. What are they using? Okay. Fancy. Making this out of sheet metal. Okay. So to form the box, she has to remove a four inch square from each corner, four inches by four inches from each, from each corner. Now, I don't know if you can read this very well, but the original sheet metal was X by X inches. They wrote that pretty tiny. So guys, what shape was the original metal? Square. square. Did it say square in the directions? Yeah. Okay. But I knew it was square because X by X also. Now, she wants the box to hold 32 what? Cubic feet. Okay, that is volume, right? Cubic feet. Now we got to dig deep into our ge geometric uh, part of our, our memory banks. I don't know how much volume you did back in geometry class. Usually we don't get that far in the book because it's mostly... You're doing mostly logic in, in actual high school geometry. So it might have been maybe seventh grade, eighth grade, the last time you did like area and volume and that sort of thing. Did you do some in geometry? Great. Now, do you remember how to find the volume of a box? Do you remember the formula? Just, just in general terms, the volume of a rectangular prism or a box. Length times width, times height. Okay, so we're gonna start there. And this is definitely something you wanna write down in your notes that that's the formula for volume of a rectangular prism of a box. Okay. All right, so what we have to do now is we've gotta put in what our new measurements will be. Okay, so I've gotta picture this box, okay? So, I don't know if you can picture this with me, but that's the bottom of my box, correct, guys? Can you picture that? And can you picture that this piece here, that would be flipping up as one of the sides? Can, can you picture that? I know sometimes it's hard to picture that. And this piece would be the other side. What about these four sides? Aren't they, wouldn't they all be the same? Okay, all right. So as far as length goes, I usually consider the length this measurement here, like the length of the bottom of my base. Is that okay if I, does it really matter? Okay, how long would this be? Because the whole thing used to be what? Used to, well, it used, the whole thing used to be X all the way across. But I took four inches off here, and I took four inches off here. Well, do I know that it's 10 inches, though? Yeah, I just know the whole thing was X, guys. Okay? You're probably already going to solving it. I just want it in terms of X right now. Okay? So, I know the whole thing was X, correct, guys? And it was X, and I took how much off? I took a four off and another four off. How much did I take off of the X? Eight. So isn't my length X minus eight? Okay. I want to make sure everybody understands that. Do you get the fact that it used to be X inches long all the way across? And I cut off four on one side and four on the other side. Isn't that taking eight inches off? Does that make sense? Okay, 
Now, as far as width goes, how wide is the box? Well, I kind of would think this would be width here, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be the same thing? Because think about it, guys. Wasn't this x also? Didn't this used to be x? Yeah. Didn't I take 4 and 4 off of that as well? It's the same thing, isn't it? Kind of makes sense. It was a square. I took the same amount off of each side of that square. Isn't my base still square? It's just instead of x by x, it's x minus 8 by x minus 8. Okay? But how high is the box? What's going to make the height? I'm going to take this 4-inch little flap, and I'm going to do what with it? That's going to be how high it is, right, guys? Aren't these little 4-inch rectangles that I built here? Isn't that going to be how tall the box is going to be? How tall are they? Four inches. Okay. Now, I could actually put one more thing in. I know what V is. What's the volume? 32. I'll replace that as well. Okay, I've got everything in my formula that I need. But it looks kind of ugly. Shouldn't that all be multiplied out before I try to solve it? Yeah. Um, how do we want to multiply three things like this? Yeah, I probably would FOIL first, yeah. We only want to do two at a time, right? So I probably would FOIL this first. X squared. Negative 8X. And another negative 8X. Could we combine them right away if we wanted to? Negative 8x and another negative 8x would be negative. Now, if you want to leave them separately and combine them on the next step, you certainly can. I kind of like when I FOIL just to combine them right away. And then negative 8 times negative 8. Okay. And now, yeah, it was a perfect square, right? Now, we can do one of two things here, guys. Some of you want to distribute the 4, right? We could make it easier for us to solve this. Could, well, instead of distributing the 4 and making this have a 4 out in front, it's 4 times that, right? Could I just divide both sides by 4 and not have to have a 4x squared? Wouldn't that be a lot easier? Yeah, then I don't even have to distribute the 4. That kind of would make our work easier, wouldn't it? So what do I get over here? 8. eight. And on this side? x squared minus 16x plus 64. Okay. Now, almost ready to solve it. But in order to solve it, well, it needs to be equal to zero. Yeah. You want to move that term, is what she's saying. Okay, subtract eight. Now, you, again, you could have distributed the four. I'm not mad if you do that, but don't we like the one x squared better if we can? Okay. Oops, I forgot something. That needs an x. Okay, now... Do you want to do the discriminant, or do you look at it and say, oh, I can factor that, or are you not sure if you can factor it, or how do we want to solve it? Are we not sure? If we're not sure, what do we look? We do the discriminant, yeah? Is there anybody sitting there that already knows what they would do? Well, I'm kind of looking at what, what they're doing there and what did, what did they do? Did they factor? They completed the square, did they not? Okay, so kind of looking at what they did, they went and completed the square, which tells me factoring probably doesn't work. But guys, had this not been there, let's just see if they made a wise decision. 
Let's do the discriminant. Negative 16 squared minus 4 times what? 1 times 56. Because just because they chose completing the square doesn't mean that was the right thing to do. What is this? 256? 256 minus. But I think it was the right thing to do because 32 means two positive real answer or two two real answers, right? But is it a perfect square? No. So would factoring have worked? No. No. So what did they do? They completed the square. So let's look at what they have we have here. So we should complete the square. So what should I do with this 56? Move it to the other side. Okay. Do you remember how to get that? Yeah. Half of negative 16 divided by 2 quantity, so negative 4 squared is? Oh, I did that wrong. I can't divide today. What's half of negative 16? 8. Negative 8. Negative 8 squared is 64. So I've got to add it here and here. So what does this become? X minus 8 quantity. And on this side? 32. Try it again. 8. Okay, but... Remember, they don't always do the division out right away. So is there one that looks relatively close? Okay. Do they at least have an X minus A? Which one can we throw out? The X plus A, right? Okay. Now, um, I think we can throw out B, right? Now, I think we can throw out A, because if we divided the 8 out of A, because ours doesn't have an 8, 32 divided by 8, though, is only what? 4, and I don't have a 4, right? So is this the same as what I have? No. Nope. But on this one, if I divide out the 4 that they have in front, what would that be the same as? Would that be the same as what I have? And guys, remember what we did early on. Didn't we divide out our 4 right away instead of distributing it? Right? Didn't we do that way up here? Yes. They instead factored it out. It's the same thing, isn't it? They just wait and do it at the end. Okay. All right. Now, they want to know what are the dimensions of the sheet metal, the original sheet metal. Well, in order for us to know that, don't we have to solve for x? Because weren't the dimensions of the sheet metal x by x? So I guess i got to solve for x. How do I do that? How do I get rid of the squared? Square root, positive and negative. Now, they do say what are the, the dimensions, but it looks like they're allowing rounding. So I could just round this, correct? So can somebody tell me what the square root of 8 is approximately? So positive and negative about 2.8-ish, okay? Then I would add what? 8. Okay, so what are my two possibilities? Well, one of them is if I took 2.8 and added on 8. So one of my possibilities is it could have been a 10.8 by 10.8 square. 
Is that one of our choices? Yes. Okay. Now, what about the other choice, though? What about negative 2.8 plus 8? 5.2. Okay. But guys, why don't they have that as a choice? Because if you took four inches from both sides, that would be... Yeah. This one, even though it looks like it could be... I couldn't have had a 5 by 2 by 5.2 square. Because if it was only 5.2 inches, how in the world could we take 4 inches from each side? You can't. There wasn't enough there to take 8 inches off. So 5.2 would not have worked because we took 8 inches off. Not enough out of 5.2 to take 8 inches off. Right? Because we took 4 and 4. Do you see why I got to eliminate that second answer? All right. Does that make sense? Okay. Those open box problems you see a lot in any curriculum. In any curriculum. So those are very common problems. Okay. You don't always know. Sometimes, sometimes the, the box, the squares, are the X's. So sometimes those are the unknown. Do you have a question? Um, so with this one at the beginning, mm -hmm. when we're figuring out the volume of it, mm -hmm. you get the x minus 8 times x minus 8 times 4. Mm -hmm. Couldn't we just simplify that to 4x minus 8 squared and then get the second part as well? 4 times x minus 8 quantity squared? Yep. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Equals 32? Oh, yeah. Wouldn't that have been a lot easier? <laughs> For sure, because that would have been right there. Because that's what I did. And I just Duh! Why didn't I do that right away? Because then it would have been a complete square right away. I'm hanging my head in shame. Because we usually do that, don't we? And wait, why didn't you speak up? Sorry. Matthew. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because don't we usually do that? Don't we usually write this as a perfect square? And I almost said that because when you said, well, it's a perfect square, and I'm like, yeah, we could have, we should have. Oh, missed opportunity. That's okay. Forgive you this time. Don't make me be so stupid next time. He made me be stupid. No. No, I did that all on my own. <laughs> Maddie's like, nope, that was all on you. No, because I don't think any of us even realize that either. So it's okay. I mean, I thought you were good. Oh, okay. All right. Hall's parents. are So somebody's first name is Hall. That's so weird, right? Different. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Hall's parents are planning to build an in-ground swimming pool and have asked for his help in the planning process. The in-ground swimming pool will be rectangular in shape with a width that we're going to call W. Okay, that's big for me because in Algebra 1, sometimes they pick letters that have no match at all to what we're talking about. Um, for example, they might be talking about plates of food and they'll choose J. It drives us insane. It really, it drives us insane. So I'm very glad that they're calling with W here and the length is L. Okay. So the inbound swimming pool will be rectangular in shape. I like to draw a rectangle here and it says the inbound swimming pool will be rectangular in shape with a width of W. That is eight longer than twice the length L. Okay. So right now I'm going to call this L and I'm going to call this W. But we don't want two variables right now, right? We don't want an L and a W. Area is length times width, right, for a rectangle. So we are going to start there because they want us to deal with area. Okay. Okay. But guys, we don't want two different variables, so we're going to use what they say width is equal to. Eight feet longer than twice what L is. Instead of using W, how can I change that into terms of L? Eight feet longer. So 
Eight. Something plus eight. Something plus eight. Oh, yeah. Eight feet yeah. longer would be adding eight. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Adding eight to what? Twice what L is? Did we now just get the two dimensions with the same variable? And you said area, we find area by taking length, which we're calling L, times the width, which we're now calling 2L plus 8. All right. And what is the area equal to? So which one of those is basically the same thing I just wrote, just switched around? C? Everybody agree? Does that make sense to everybody? You should have done problems like this a lot in Algebra 1. I like the fact, though, that they help you a little bit with these at first with the multiple choice. Does it make sense? Yes. Now, guys, that doesn't look quadratic at first. But it is quadratic. Okay? If we have this, and I'll, I'll write it in the order they have it. What makes this quadratic? When we go to solve it now. Because there's two sides. Distribute the L. Right. And when we distribute, what's an L times a 2L going to give you? 2L squared. And then L times 8. And that equals. All right. Now, don't we want to move it all to one side to make our decision? How would I move that 5 here? Subtract it. Okay. Do we have an idea of which method we'd want to use? Or should we look at the discriminant to make a good decision? Okay. So it'd be 8 squared. Negative 550. Yeah. Yeah, you miss one negative. And all of a sudden, you think your answers are imaginary. So be very careful. So 64 plus 4,400. So that's what, 4,464? Is that a perfect square? It's not a perfect square. Everybody agree? Which I should have probably been aware of. Because it does say closest estimate, we probably should have been given the clue up here that factoring probably wasn't going to work because they're already telling us to round it off. So if factoring's not going to work, do you want to use completing a square or a quadratic formula? Either one would be fine here. We could get rid of the two really easily. Quadratic, though, is that what everybody wants to do? Or, or completing. Quadratic. Okay. So, opposite of B, plus or minus square root of? Eight negative No, B. The eight squared? Square minus four times two. You know what? We already know what this is underneath yeah. here. Do we have to redo it all? Didn't we already find the discriminant, guys? Isn't it 44.64? You don't have to redo all that. You already know that. All over 2 times 2? Two, two two. Two. So can I just put it over 4? Yeah. If you've already done the work of the discriminant, just put that number underneath the square root. You've already done that. It's kind of silly to, to write it all again, isn't it? Unless you screwed up on it. Okay, so negative 8 divided by 4. Now, we know, guys, that this is just going to be an estimate, right? So square root of 4464 approximately, because they're letting us round. 66.81 66 divided by 4. 60.70. Did she do that right, guys, when she divided it by 4? Okay, now negative 2 plus that 
is about 14.70, right? Which one's the closest? It's about 15 feet, right? Now, I'm not going to even do the second one because the second one would be a negative minus 16. Would that make any sense to have a negative length? So we only take the positive answer. Okay, so that was the length. So our length is approximately 15 feet, correct? What about the width? The width, they said, was 2 times 15 plus, didn't they say 2 times the length plus 15? Wasn't it 8 more than twice the length? 38? There you go. Not making sense. So now we finally are getting a feel of why we learn how to solve quadratics. We just don't learn it because, oh, wow, aren't we smart? We can solve quadratics. We learn it to solve problems where you have a squared unknown. And guys, every day, area, my goodness, area is huge in real life, okay? Earth's gravity, projectile problems, huge. If, if, you're just, if you're a sports fan, if, that, if, if I can reach you just on throwing a ball, kicking a ball, hitting a ball, that's a projectile, okay? Everyday life, okay? Let's see. What number are we on? Okay, let's try one more. Latasha's math teacher has assigned each student a project to design a pennant, which is basically a triangular shaped flag. The directions for the project state that the pennant must have an area of 588 square inches, and that the height must be one inch more than twice its base. Figure is not drawn to scale. Do you remember the area formula for a triangle? No, that's no, the Pythagorean half, theorem. Half, one half, one half base, base times height. Very good. Okay. Now, okay, they use 0.5. That's the same thing, right? Okay, so I'm going to go with what they use since I'm looking at there. So um, the area she wants to be 588, right? 0.5 is the same thing as one half. What did they say about the base? That's the height. They don't say anything about the base, right? So we'll just call the base B. But the height, she says, has to be one inch more than. One inch more than would be adding one to twice the base. Okay. Which one's close to that? Yeah, 1 plus 2B, 2P plus 1, that's the same thing, is it not? Okay. That makes sense to everybody? Now, if you would have put a 1 half, you guys all know that's 0.5, right? Okay, so then we want to solve this for the base. Solve for B. So what would you do first? Yeah, yeah, since it's got a B with it, you definitely want to distribute. Okay, so 588 equals, well, 0.5 times 2, that's just a 1, right? So B times B. B squared. And then 0.5B times 1 is 0.5B. Okay. And then probably just move the 588 over. Well, I'm not crazy about that B, the, the B in front, or the number in front of it. So I'm not even thinking factoring, not with a fr fraction or decimal. So what are you thinking? Probably quadratic formula with, with a fraction or a decimal? I wouldn't want to complete the square. I'm not even going to look at the discriminant. With anytime with you have a decimal, let's go quadratic formula. 
Okay, so equals zero. So B equals opposite of B, negative 0.5, right? <clears throat> Plus or minus square root of quantity squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 588 all over 2 times 1. So negative 0.5 divided by 2 plus or minus, oh, what's that ugliness underneath there? Two, isn't it 0.25? Oh, yeah. 0.25 yeah. plus I got 2352.25. 2352.25? Yeah. Okay. So our base is negative 0.25. Wouldn't I just do the plus, guys? We wouldn't want to do a minus, would we? So can somebody take that square root and divide it by 2? Let's just finish up the base here real quick. Say that again? 24.25. After dividing by 2? Okay, if I add negative 0.25 to that, is it 24? 24 inches? And then real quick, guys, what's the height related to that? Well, what did it say up here? Two times it plus one. Two times 24 plus one. 49. Can you check it real quick? What's 24 times 49 and then divide it by 2? Is it 588? Can you check for me, Liz, real quick? Take 24 times 49 and then divide. Did I call you Liz? Divide by 2. So we got the right answer. Okay. All right, we'll finish this up maybe tomorrow if I'm here, if I don't have jury duty. If I'm not here, guys, you'll work on next review.